Hi, it's Kurt from here at City Campus, and um, welcome to our uh, Friday, if you're watching on Friday, devotional on um, our everyday devotional, but right now we're going through the books of the New Testament. And today, we're lucky enough to talk about um, a book that I just, I, I, I kind of have both kinds of feelings about. It's a beautiful book. It's got some great messages in it. And I want to make sure we understand that it's written a little bit differently than the other Gospels. So let's get right into our study for today. So as we finish these uh, New Testament uh, books, as we continue to go through these overviews, uh, we're going to be talking today about John. John's Gospel. The, uh, it's written by John the Apostle, and uh, it's book four of the New Testament. Now, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, those are called the synoptic gospels. That's because they mostly are similar. They're telling Jesus' story for the sake of telling Jesus' story. Um, they do present a little bit different uh, thing. You know, Luke's is very historical. Mark's is very much about Jesus' suffering and the fact that he's a suffering servant. Um, Matthew, very much about Jesus being the king, the coming king. John's got a different focus because his is written about 30 to 35 years after the other ones in the late 80s or perhaps the 90s. Um, when John is very old, even though John was quite a young guy when Jesus was when he was Jesus's disciples. And um, and so he's it's quite a long time. And there's been there's has a there's a been a bit a bit of a heresy has shown up by this time. And the heresy is, is that some people think that Jesus was really only kind of like a ghost. He wasn't a real guy. He was a ghost that was on earth. He appeared to be real, but he wasn't for, for real because they believed that the spirit of your body is always perfect and pure, but your flesh, this stuff right here, is always evil. And so they couldn't believe that Jesus could be both perfect and flesh, so they believed that he had to be a spirit. It's called Gnosticism, also called the uh, Nicolaitan. Uh, anyway, I, I won't go into that, but Gnosticism, and they um, they started to believe that. And and part of John's reason for writing this book and all his other books was to combat this heresy of Gnosticism. So, just note that. John's got a completely different focus, and he doesn't, he isn't really telling all of Jesus' story. He's mostly focusing on the last six days of his life. So the main theme is that Jesus is both a real man, and he's really God, and salvation's only through him. The key words are kind of about I am. He's, I am, Jesus says, I am the word, I am the light, I am the door, I am the way. And he says this all the time, right? So that I am really gives you that idea. Who else said that? Oh, God said that from the burning bush to Moses, you know? So uh, just kind of be aware. Uh, chapters one through three, that's kind of the purpose. Early ministry was in Judea. You know, we find out in John, only in John, that Jesus made two visits to, to Passover, uh, one early in his ministry and one later in his ministry. He meets Nicodemus at this early one, and that's where he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man, or sorry, uh, yeah, no man comes to life through me. Now that's that's later on. He says, uh, this is the way God loved the world. He gave his only life, he gave his only son, so that uh, you don't have to perish but have eternal life. We'll read this in just a second. And that's in that meeting with Nicodemus. Chapters four through eleven, you know, this is kind of Jesus preaching and healing. There's some different stories here. Uh, and then he ends up down in Judea at, towards the end of this little section. Actually, he's only in, in Galilee just a really short time in John. He goes down, he raises Lazarus from the dead at the end of this. He's sometime in there. He's already met Mary and Martha. Um, he's been down back and forth. This is the Samaritan woman happens inside this 4 to 11 area. And then starting at chapter 12, we got the last week of Jesus' life. It's almost the entire second half of the book. Well, it really is. And in 12 is Palm Sunday. Well, we already know that's the, the triumphal entry. Jesus enters Jerusalem on Sunday, and we're going to have, he's going to be crucified that Friday. Jesus predicts his death that's coming up in a few days. 
Uh, in 13, we have the Last Supper. This is where Jesus washes the disciples' feet. It's the only place it's presented. Uh, he talks about Peter denying him. Uh, in 14, Jesus tells uh, his disciples that he's the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father through him, and he promises them the Holy Spirit when he goes away. He's trying to explain to them that he's going to leave them soon, and they still don't quite understand it. In 15, Jesus talks about the vine and that we must stay attached to the vine. It's Jesus. 16, he teaches on the Holy Spirit, and he again teaches about his death. Um, in seven, and this is kind of all happening after the Last Supper, right? This is all happening on that night of the Last Supper and around that time period. Um, 17 is Jesus' lengthy prayer for um, his disciples, for all the uh, for other believers, and for you and I. Jesus is arrest in chapter 18 and his trial before the Sanhedrin, uh, but before Herod, before Pilate, all of that stuff happens in chapter 18. In chapter 19, Jesus is crucified and he dies. And again, a little bit different uh, take on it as John was there. So we could think of this as being probably the most accurate of the crucifixion accounts. As John was physically there, we are pretty sure that none of the other disciples attended the crucifixion in person. So they were all writing third-hand accounts. Uh, he's buried, and we, we find out about that as well. Jesus rises from the dead in chapter 20, and he appears to his disciples. He appears to Mary Magdalene. He appears to a lot of people. And, uh, and then he commissioned them. And in chapter 20, we kind of have it's, it's kind of a little extra story. Jesus appears to his disciples in Galilee, and among many other things, he forgives and reinstates Peter and kind of says, feed my sheep. It's a beautiful, beautiful moment where Jesus and Peter have this moment because Peter is one of the like inner circle guys, right? Peter, James, and John, those are kind of the inner circle guys. And this is John writing about his friend Peter, who his friend's been dead for about 30 years at this point when he's writing this. It's crazy. And who knows exactly when John even saw him last, right? Because they went off into different ministries pretty quick afterwards. Well, I chose some verses to read um, that you probably already know from uh, John. John 1.14 says, so, and these are obviously from the New Living Translation. So if you've been reading from one or the other translations for quite some time, um, these may be a little different than the ones you're familiar with. So I like them. Uh, so the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. And it's a beautiful passage and a beautiful, beautiful thing for us to know. We have seen his glory. John 3, 16, one that everybody in the world seems to know. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. What a beautiful thing. I love, I love it. You know, you, you kind of all hear, so God so loved the world. A better translation for this is how God loved the world. I just think that's much better translation. John 14, 6, uh, probably one of my favorite passages in the Bible is Jesus explains exactly what's happening. I'm the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. No one can come to the Father except through me. Do you think you get to go to heaven through Buddha or through this guy or through that cat? Nope, through Jesus. John 20, 31, I think of this as the purpose of John writing the book of John. Why did he write it? He said, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. John really had a different focus. Where, Pete, where Matthew, Mark, and Luke, or Mark really writing for Peter, um, Luke may be writing for Paul, possibly. 
they were there, they were there to tell Jesus' story, tell about his crucifixion, to tell about him raising from the dead, to tell about his love. But John was there. He wanted that he wanted people to be encouraged. He wanted people to know that Jesus was really Jesus. He was that guy that ate, ate with them. He was that guy that cooked food for them. He was that guy that wanted a piece of fish. He was that guy that sat down on a lawn with all those other people and ate. He was a real, real, real person. So uh, God bless you as you, uh, as you go through this. We're talking about uh, Luke's other work in the New Testament. Um, you know, in the New Testament, you know, probably, obviously, Paul has the most books. We'll be starting on those on Tuesday. But um, next is John. We just read his gospel and or looked at his gospel. He has three letters and revelation. That's number two. But then third in the New Testament is Luke. And now we'll be reading his second book or looking at his second book on uh, on Tuesday, and then Wednesday we'll start on Paul's gospel or Paul's letters, and we'll be there a while. So uh, it'll be good. God, we love you. Thank you for John's book. Thank you for John's passion as an old fella, um, wanting to uh, correct uh, problematic thoughts about Jesus, but also wanting to tell Jesus' story from his perspective, from perspective of. 40 or 50 or 60 years away and really just bring in the passion and bring in the glory of Jesus home to us and bring in his personhood home to us. Thank you for John's work and for what he brought us in terms of this, the stories of Jesus. Thank you for the foot washing that we don't know about from anywhere else. Um, thankful that I get to know that Jesus was servant enough to wash feet. It's in his name I pray. Amen. Guys, I hope you have an amazing weekend. And if you're out and about, come on over to City Campus. We're, we're having church in person. That's at uh, 1710 East 10th there on, uh, on, in Jeffersonville. And that's at the Maxwell's House of Music. So I hope you'll stop in and, uh, and see us. Uh, it's at 930 on Sunday. And if you have any prayer requests or anything like that, Leave a, leave a comment, leave a message. Um, I saw a comment yesterday. It was interesting. And, uh, but feel, feel free to leave comments here as long as they're more or less on topic. I'm not going to get rid of them. If, if there, there's people that leave weirdo messages that I delete. But uh, if you leave a regular message, that, it, it won't go away. So uh, and if you want a private message, um, you'll see the email as we, as we fade out. So uh, Catch you later. Talk to you.